Adding video to your Framer site is one of the fastest ways to make it feel alive, grab attention, and add energy you can't always get from static images. But if those videos aren't optimized, they can slow down your site, eat up bandwidth, and create a slower, more frustrating experience. So we're gonna break down the why and the how of keeping your videos looking great while still performing smoothly in Framer. In Framer, videos fall into two buckets. The first are embedded videos from third-party platforms like YouTube or Vimeo, which are best for long-form content. But the second are video files that are directly inside of our Framer projects. And that's what we're going to focus on in this lesson. These types of videos often get used for short background loops, UI demos, or quick displays of complex animation. It's important to know that while Framer automatically optimizes any images we upload to our site, videos are a bit different. Framer helps how they load, but it doesn't shrink or optimize the file size itself. That's on us, the designer. And while a 10 megabyte video might sound pretty lean, it can still drag down your site's loading speed, especially if it's sitting in your header. The goal is to keep videos at five megabytes or less since larger video files also eat up bandwidth. The good news is, Framer only loads videos when they're near the viewport, so extra videos further down the page won't impact initial load. This allows us to load multiple videos on a page without worrying about blocking interactions. Optimizing video files also gives us two easy wins. Search engines reward fast sites with better SEO, and mobile visitors get a smoother experience even on slower networks. All right, so now that we've covered the why, let's move into the how, starting with a few tools that you can use to optimize your videos before bringing them into Framer. First up is Adobe Media Encoder, which is a part of Adobe Creative Cloud and a natural fit if you're already working in Premiere or After Effects. It has a ton of flexibility for exporting multiple formats and resolutions and is a great option if you're already part of the Adobe ecosystem. Then there's Handbrake an open source video transcoder that's free, cross-platform, and really easy to use. It's perfect for quick exports and dialing in your file size without any extra hassle. And for most cases, Handbrake is more than enough to get your videos optimized for the web. Whichever tool you go with, the key is choosing the right settings before you export your video. Things like format, compression, and resolution have the biggest impact when it comes to optimization. So let's start with file format, which is important because it determines two things, how compatible your video is across browsers and devices and how efficiently the video is compressed. Choosing the right format makes sure your video looks good, plays everywhere and stays lightweight. H.264 is the safest choice because it's supported by almost every browser and device while H.265 and WebM can shrink file sizes even further, but the support is less universal. Then there's bitrate, which is basically how much data your video uses per second. Higher bitrate means better quality, but heavier files, and lower bit rates shrink the size, but risk making your video look blurry or blocky. For most web video, the sweet spot is two to four megabits per second. Handbrake and Media Encoder both make it easy to adjust bitrate and even give us some options to optimize files specifically for playback on the web. Here's the thing. There isn't a universal setting that works for every video. Some clips can be compressed more aggressively than others. The only way to know is to test and tweak until you land on the smallest file size with the best quality. Another factor that directly impacts your video's file size is resolution. Basically how wide and tall your video is in pixels. Higher resolution means more detail, but also larger files. The key is to only export video at the size it will actually be displayed on your site. For example, full width background video needs more detail, small inline cards don't. Dropping in a giant 4K file for a small section doesn't add quality, it just adds weight. So always match the resolution to the placement. Beyond resolution, there are a couple of other things that can help keep your videos light and performant. Keep the videos short, at least under 15 seconds. Trim extra frames, make loops seamless, and remove audio to keep files small and avoid autoplay issues. 
If your video really needs sound, it's probably better for YouTube or Vimeo. Optimized videos aren't just lighter files. They actually create better experiences for your users. So by choosing the right format, matching the resolution to how the video will be displayed, and dialing in the compression, you'll keep your videos light, looking great, and loading smoothly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.